Where did it all go wrong for the San Francisco 49ers versus the Ravens on Christmas? Well, typically we come to you every Monday or Tuesday in this instance to present you with Baldy's breakdowns. And typically he shows us uh, uh, how things went right for the San Francisco 49ers. But today is going to be a little bit different. He is going to show us what went wrong with the San Francisco 49ers and why that happened. Because that's typically what the day after a loss is trying to understand and trying to determine why the things went the way they went. So who better to turn to than Brian Baldinger as he breaks down some of the clips from San Francisco 49ers Ravens and what went wrong in this game for the 49ers. Take a look right here as Baldy breaks it down. This is Brock Purdy's first interception. And when McCaffrey goes out, watch, all they do, they just kick everything over a little bit. But those safeties aren't moving. Now, in this route combination right here, all right, you get like a smash concept right there. But here comes Debo in the middle. But there's Kyle Hamilton right there. There's nothing threatening his zone. All right, he's just sitting right on the goal line, 10 toes on the goal line. All right, nothing's going past him. And so when Purdy tries to throw this ball to Debo, I mean, he's got nothing else to do but to jump in front of it. And if you watch it right here, there he is. Zone coverage, nothing threatening him right here. But eyes on the quarterback all the way. So when Purdy sees Debo breaking, he thinks he's got it right there. Except he's not accounting for the fact that the safety, Kyle Hamilton, is just looking for work. This matchup zone, it doesn't get fooled by pre-snap motion and shifting and formations. They match up with you. It's a problem for the 49ers. Take a look at this interception here. The Ravens are in a cover two right here. Safeties are back. Here comes Ayuk in motion. They don't do anything. They just sit there in their zone coverage right here. But they're going to blitz both corners, both Brandon Stevens and Marlon Humphrey. 21 and 44 are both coming. Now on the play, it's a good play. It's a good, it's a good blitz, especially if they hand it off to McCaffrey right here. You're going to get somebody that's just going to force McCaffrey inside. But if you throw it like they do here, and they see Debo just expanding because that's a hot read against that look, the safety's got to come down and cover him. But Stevens gets his hands up in the air. And Humphrey was blitzing from the other side, so he gets a batted ball interception right there. And they stop that drive. They just do things different than every other team in the league. They give up yards. They don't give up a lot of points. 49ers did some good things on the run game. You look at the eye formation right here. Weak side, outside zone. So let's watch Trent Williams and Aaron Banks right here. Like they get the party started. All right. And then you look at Brendel and Feliciano here and McKivitz on the backside. They cut the defense in half. And Juice gets the lead block. And now Debo picks up a block and McCaffrey goes 39 yards. All right. Basic play, eye formation, day one installation. They followed up the very next play. Here it is. Watch Aaron Banks right here. And he gets to the second level to block right here, Roquan Smith. Good angle right here. And then you get Trent basically just hooking Genevieve and Clowney. So you get that hole right there by Willie Sneed, Aaron Banks, and bam. McCaffrey's not missing that. That was basically the highlight at the end of the second quarter. Toss, toss crack, toss weak is one of the five basic plays of the 49ers. Let's show you how you stop it. All right, this is going to be toss crack where Kittle and Ayuk are going to block down on Brent Urban right here. And McKivitz is going to pull. Now, you're either the hammer or the nail when you pull. Like, he's designed to block the force. But Marlon Humphrey comes, and he's the hammer. Bam. Like, Marlon Humphrey comes, and he makes his play. And what he does is he bubbles McCaffrey. Now watch Roquan Smith zero and watch him out of BK come. Like here they come and their speed and their ability to feet block show up. And there you go. McCaffrey's got no place to go, no place to hide. And he's met by both Roquan and Matt Abike. But that man made the play. Marlon Humphrey made the play. Bubbling McCaffrey. We all watch this play. Patrick Queen comes he blitzes off the edge right here to keep McCaffrey in so he can't get out in the route. So 
right here. Purdy's looking, looking, looking. Can't find anything. Queen wins. But this play right here is just not smart. And if the 49ers want to get to where they want to get to, you can't do this with the football. That you can't do. I mean, it looks fun. It's backyard. It's, you know, it's LeBron in the NBA, blind pass. That you can't do. That one has to get thrown out of the playbook. And you can't let that happen again. That's just careless. And the Ravens, their matchup zone, defeated this team. The Ravens said, this Nick Bosa guy, he ain't going to beat us. Under any circumstances, he ain't going to beat us. We'll do everything we have to do. We'll put all our offense alignment on Nick Bosa and Kinlaw, but we're not going to let Bosa get to Lamar Jackson. I mean, sometimes they just announce their game plan. Like, let's make sure everybody gets a piece of Bosa. And then whatever Lamar does, Lamar does. Mrs. Zay Flowers, one of the few misses to Zay in the dirty game. An RPO right here. You can give it to Justice Hill, all right? Line's blocking just fine. Ricard comes and seals Bosa. Or you could throw it outside to Zay Flowers, the Zay Hay kid. And this is why he's the leading receiver, because this is what he does. He's like the whoop. He's just a whoop, whoop kid. Down goes Tig. Whoop, whoop, Fred Warner. Like, he just keeps making people miss in the open space. And then he gets down, whoop, maybe a little late roll right there by Cleveland Farrell. But nonetheless, he's the whoop, whoop kid, man. Whoop, whoop. This is third and 16 at the end of the first half. 49ers playing a quarter's look right here, and Lamar drops back, and he doesn't like what he sees, and then he gets out. And in a game that was full of stars, full of stars all over the place, Lamar's the biggest star. In fact, this is the biggest star in the league. He's not going to slide. He's not going to go down. He's going to make people miss, go for 30, set up a field goal. Then you get this right here. Like, just a four-man rush right here. Like, his ability just to elude the rush, keep his eyes down the field, and then find Gus Edwards right here playing point guard, and you pick up 39 yards. And then you get this play here. All right, this touchdown at the top of the third quarter. All right, San Francisco plays great red zone defense, and they take everything away. All right, they're very disciplined, eyes up right here, and the Lamar says right over here, all right, look, Nelson Aguilar, you uncover, and I'll get you the ball against good coverage. Like, you watch it, and he makes it just look so effortless. Like, he's just faster than everybody. And then when he throws these darts, they don't miss. Aguilar, touchdown. In a game full of stars, Lamar's the biggest star. As you can see from that clip, it wasn't all bad. There was some good in there. You know, we saw some of the running plays in the Christian McCaffrey touchdown. But honestly, a lot of it wasn't all that great, um, whether it was missed tackles, whether it was missed blocking assignments, whether it was bad reads, taking – chances when you shouldn't have not being able to contain Lamar Jackson I mean the reasons are there of why the San Francisco 49ers lost this game but I mean honestly when you're really looking at this of course you have to give credit to the Ravens I think that's a hard part with like some of the discourse outside of this game is people are having a hard time like understanding that yes the 49ers got beaten and <clears throat> you know maybe they didn't do things to the way they should have and you know, didn't execute to their level, didn't call the best game plan, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Also got to give some credit to the Ravens, man. They played they played a great game. They were prepared. They had tons of energy, and they made it really, really difficult for the San Francisco 49ers. And, again, they came away with the W, and fair and square. I, I, I'm not going to blame refs. I'm not going to blame anything else other than the fact that, that the Ravens came into our home and they beat us. And that is going to be a great lesson for the San Francisco 49ers as they are hoping to have home field advantage throughout the playoffs and how we you can't let other teams come into your home and beat you like that. So uh, a lesson learned for the San Francisco 49ers, but uh, I do think there will be plenty of room to improve on a lot of the things that we've seen in these clips let me know what you guys think about baldy's breakdown what do you guys think is the biggest concern with the san francisco 49ers right now let me know in the comments and as always make sure to like and subscribe for more updates